The video you are about to see is extracted directly from BIM After Dark Volume 3. Head on over to BIMAfterDark.com and select Volume 3 to find out more. Now that you have the foundations of creating typical practical families, sometimes you got to go a little outside the box. So what I have here is an example project. Uh, this is actually the example project I use in Volume 2. I take this design model and convert it into construction documents. I thought it was a good example to start introducing you to conceptual massing and adaptive components. Uh, what you see here, if I zoom in, we have these drapes and columns system here. And creating that in the traditional family editor is pretty much impossible. You've got non-coplanar non surfaces and they're tweaking and adjusting and stuff. So the only way to do it was actually using adaptive components. So if I highlight, if I isolate these, you can just get a sense of it. So there you go. You can see what these roofs are doing. And this is a really, really, really simple family and a really good introduction to adaptive components, I think. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I made those from the very beginning. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new family. We're going to go to the Revit button, New Family. And then we're going to go down to Generic Model Adaptive. And click Open. Now you'll see we're actually in the conceptual modeling environment. Although this is an adaptive component, it's still the same as the conceptual modeling environment. So the one thing you'll notice in this environment is that, is that there is no extrusion, sweep, blend, and all those little tools that we saw before. Um, the modeling is a little more freeform. And it's, it's based more on profiles and paths and, and um, reference lines, model lines, etc. And you'll see exactly what I mean. Uh, you do have some typical things that you've seen. There's, you know, uh, parameters, dimensions, all that stuff will work fine. The biggest difference is you're missing all those extrusions. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an adaptive component. So what we need to do first is we're going to have two profiles that are going to be swept together, essentially. So if I go back and look at this. You can see there are this this edge and this edge are swoop, uh, swoops and they're sort of looping together, lofting together to create that shape. So what we need is we need two work planes to draw those on. So even though we're in conceptual massing, you still rely quite a bit on work planes. So I'm just going to go to my reference floor plan and I'm going to quickly just draw two. We don't care about the distances here because it's adaptive and you'll see what I mean. So there we go there. We've got our, our reference planes. We're going to draw our first reference line. So I'm going to go to create and we're going to do a reference line. I'm going to set it to one of these planes that I just clicked, uh, just created. And if I click show, although well, you see it highlighted a little bit, I'm going to click show so that oh, you can see it there. There we go. So that you can see where we're working on. And remember, this is going to be adaptive. So I'm not super, super um, strict about uh, my parameters. We're not trying to add parameters too much to this. Now that we have our reference plane set up, we're going to create our surface. So I'm going to use a reference line and I'm going to select spline through points and it's going to give us points, which is what we want. Now we're automatically set to this reference plane over here. If you want to draw it on the other reference plane, we'll click set. We'll select the reference plane and you can see where it's highlighted. That's what I'm drawing on. So I'm just going to make sort of that shape. You can see there it is there. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other reference plane. So I'm going to select the one that we drew. I'm going to try and make it very similar. It doesn't have to be perfect, but the closer the better for the beginning here. Okay. So now you can see what we have with these two reference planes. Reference lines, I should say. Now if I select these points, so now that notice those points, these points actually drive this spline. For instance, if I do this, you can see it adjusts it. If I grab these endpoints, so I'm going to select those four endpoints. I'm going to click Make Adaptive. And you'll see they'll have numbers next to them and all these blue funky planes, right? So the number is actually how you're going to place it. So this will be one, two, three, four. So if you want to change that order, you can simply select it and change the order. So if I want this to be two and this to be three, this to be four, you can see I just selected it and in the properties I hit number two or you can actually just select the number and change it. So you can affect the order. But now when you place it in your project, you'll be able to place this one first, that one, then this one, then that one. And that's really all that that does. But the nice thing about it is that this all flex really well. So we need to make a shape now. All we have to do is select these two reference lines and select create form. 
and there we go. We got ourselves a form. And now this is where the conceptual massing editor is so powerful. We have this form that's three-dimensional, but now we can actually select these points, and really we can flex the crap out of this thing and not break it. Imagine trying to do that in the regular family editor. Look at this. You could pull this up, pull this down. And so that's what makes it adaptive. It's going to try and adjust. Obviously, at some point it will break, but it's going to try its best to adjust to whatever you're selecting. So now let's take a look at what happens in the project. So I've saved this. I'm going to load it into a little project I have set up where there's a couple columns. And you'll notice we see our shape, and it's kind of looking around for things, right? You can see this stuff. So this is the number one point that we created. So if I remember correctly, I want to go this direction. So that's number one, and then I can place number two, then I can place number three, and then I can place number four. And so there you have it. We're actually able to place it. Now, we haven't constrained a lot of stuff, so it's going to do some funky things. We can control this using that point. So let me place a couple more. And again, the order that you created in, and the order you place it in will have an effect. You can see if I place it in a random order, look what it tried to do. It did this crazy funky twist thing, right? So it's important what order you create things in. So let's try in this direction now, just for fun. So that's not too bad, it's, it's getting there. The other thing too is I'm going to points. If you go to the face of this, which you can, you know, it, it's looking for faces. We can try it another direction. Let's try it over here. Now you can see it's it's trying to flip upside down, but then we go here and it's okay. Oops, there we go. And then we place it there. So now you see we're creating this sort of funky tensile roof, which looks pretty neat. But if you want a little more control, we can edit, go back into this family, and the control is really going to come from this point here, right? So this point allows us to sort of go in and out and up and down and all kinds of good stuff, right? So by default, instead of trying to attach to parameters, to dimensions to it, there's a little thing called offset, which is actually going to push it in this direction, which for the sake of this, um, this family, that's probably all we would need. So I'm just going to click here, and I'm going to call this arc offset. And you know what? We probably should have made that. Let me undo that. Let me make that a type parameter. I mean an instance parameter. So let me select this here. I'm going to add a parameter, make it an instance, and call it arc offset. And then this one, we're going to give an arc offset to. I'm going to make it a different parameter. Click instance, OK. Now let's load this back into the project. Overwrite. Now we have a little bit of control. So if I was to select, I don't know, two feet here, you can see it swings out. If I go negative two feet, you can see it swings in. So just by one little point, negative two feet here, we're able to control some really, really powerful things. And so that's really the essentials of an adaptive component in the conceptual modeling environment.